Hey everybody, Brandon here with some more Pokemon Legends Arceus Hisuian form speculation. That is a mouthful, but essentially what it means is we're going to be taking a look at some Hisuian forms by some amazing artists that I definitely could see some version of them being in the games. So make sure to check out all the artists featured in this video, they are credited down below. And before we get started, make sure to hit that like button, subscribe, and hit that notification bell if you're excited to see these forms. And also if you want to see some more forms, because I'm going to be doing lots of Hisuian form speculation here on this channel. Anyway, we're going to be taking a look at some Hisuian forms, and I will also explain exactly why I think those forms could make it in the game. Starting us off, we have some new forms for the Sinnoh starters. So the reason I think that we could actually see these forms in the games is because of the starters we use in the games themselves. We use Rowlet, Cyndaquil, and Oshawott. None of those are the Sinnoh starters. So where are the Sinnoh starters? What we could see is the Sinnoh starters before they actually became the starter Pokemon and became more domesticated, if you will. I mean, just think of wolves and, you know, a Chihuahua. There's such a huge difference that domestication can make on certain animals. And that's what I could see happening with these starters. They had a more wild and untamed form before they became the starters, the more domesticated animals that we know today. So here we have Hisuian Torterra. It is grass fairy now. And as you can see, the tree is more developed on its back. It is a Sakura blossom tree. And now the Torterra looks more like a Japanese pond turtle rather than an Ankylosaurus. The reason for its fairy typing is because it used to be a forest spirit. With the modernization of Sinnoh, you had less forests for it to inhabit, and so it adapted, right? It is also fairy type because it is weak to poison and steel both things associated with pollution, which is also associated with modernization. Torterra in the future would then adapt to gain the ground typing, so it can resist those poison and steel type polluting elements that come with the modernization of Hisui, now Sinnoh. You can kind of see between Hisui and Torterra and the regular Torterra, it, you know, Torterra became more sleek, modern, kind of reflecting city parks, kind of like the cities of Sinnoh. Overall, this design is super solid. It is really well done, the backstory is amazing, the design elements featured in it are incredible. If Game Freak did something like this, I would be incredibly happy. Next up is Hisuian Infernape, which this thing is Fire Ice type and it is incredible. Super well designed. It is based on those Japanese macaques you see sitting in the hot springs on Mount Fuji. Except this one is more acclimated to Mount Coronet instead. So the backstory behind this one is as trainers started to become more prevalent in the Hisui region because of Pokemon and humans starting to come together because of the Pokédex, the Infernape started to adapt more so to trainer battles rather than living in the harsh conditions of Mount Coronet. It started to gain shorter hair, become more sleek, get the fighting type because it's used to fighting in trainer battles. Overall, I think this design is amazing. Adapting the Japanese macaque into the Infernape design was perfectly done, and overall, I'm just super impressed with this design. Next up is Hisuian Empoleon, and it is water, dark type. And the backstory behind this, and I love this, is it used to be more of a shogun, warlord, king, where it would more so give commands rather than fight in the battles themselves. Its backstory is similar to Infernape in that as trainer battles became more prevalent, it started having to defend itself more, and so it literally developed armor in the steel typing so it could defend itself better. Overall, I love this design. It's very classically Japanese, and the Shogun Daimyo look to it just fits so well on Empoleon, and it's just, it's just incredible. I don't know what else to say. Big shout out to Elite Four for letting me show off these three designs. Next up is Hisuian Han Edge, which is Steel Dark type. It is more of a short blade, a dagger if you will, and it is based on Ronin weaponry. Uh, because Ronin were like samurai, but they kind of played by their own rules. They're kind of like, you know, they played dirty, and they just used their weapons in unconditional ways, which is where that dark typing comes in. I love its sheathed and unsheathed forms. The sheathed form looks kind of like a dragon, it's got those teeth coming out of it and the little nose. And then the unsheathed form has itself holding, it, like its ribbon is holding its scabbard, which I think is really just a nice detail. Hisuian Han Edge evolves into Hisuian Dublade, and you can see now it kind of looks more like a katana, and the sheath form looks r very much like a dragon, like very much like a dragon's face, which is super, super cool. 
this design overall is really well done. I think, uh, like, and also you can see um, in its unsheathed forms, the way that the scabbards are linked, it kind of looks like a face with a smile, which just the attention to detail on this is incredible. These artists just really pulled out all the stops when it came, comes to the designs of these Pokemon. Something I just noticed, actually, as I was looking at this, is the bottom blade's eye in the sheath form is closed, so it even more so reflects a dragon's face, because, you know, a dragon's face wouldn't just have an eye here and an eye here, right? Hisuian Doublade evolves into Slash Shogun, which is probably one of the best names I've ever heard. Its inspiration is a Hanya, which is a yokai, but I've seen those kind of masks all the time on people's tattoos, putting the blade in the mouth, my brother even has a tattoo like that. It also takes inspiration from the Ainu culture that was in Hokkaido, which is where Hisui and Sinnoh are based on. Overall, I think this line is incredibly, incredibly well designed. All of the inspirations that were taken into account were really well done, really well thought out, and it just came together gorgeously. Huge shout out to Bromo Jumbo for letting me show off this incredible art. Next up is Hisui and Litwick, Lampent, and Chandelure. They are now fire rock type, and they are based on those Japanese stone lanterns that you can see sometimes at temples. I really appreciate how Litwick, they, instead of having the wax over the eye, they put a little bit of moss to replace that. But these concepts, the way they mix together is just perfect. It's very much in line with the direction that Game Freak is going with Hisui. I could definitely see these guys being in the games, maybe some kind of temple they protect or help keep lit so that the monks can do their jobs, something like that, that I think would be really, really cool. Thank you so much to the Aussie artist for letting me feature this incredible line. Next up is Hisui and Phantom, which is now Ghost Fairy type. As you can see here, it says sightings of this benevolent spirit were said to signify the coming of spring which is in line with its inspiration, which is Sakura Blossoms. In Japan, they have Sakura Blossom season, which is kind of like a week or two weeks, where all the Sakura Blossom uh, trees, you know, blossom, and it's, it's crazy. They have this thing called Hanami, where they just essentially sit under the trees and drink. It's awesome. So uh, this, this, this inspiration is definitely applicable to Hisui, and I could definitely see it being in the games. Uh, as far as the Phantom goes, I think it's really well designed. Just the little slight elements, like about the, the, the beginnings of the blossoming of a Sakura tree. Hisui and Phantom evolves into Solkara, which is a new evolution. Um, it looks a lot like Trevenant. Honestly, in my opinion, I think it could have probably stayed just as a Hisui and Trevenant, but the name is just it's too good to pass up. I think it's a really clever name. And as you can see here, it says these cherry spirits perform dances that revitalize those nearby, but an anger one would instead drain your energy, leaving you with fatigue. I think that's super cool. I think this Mon is super cool. The design elements are really well done. It looks really joyful and playful and it's dancing. It just looks really happy. And I could definitely see you wandering about the forest and seeing a Solkara you know, dancing about through the, the trees, and maybe your party gets restored if you stand near one or something. I think that would be really, really cool to see. Thank you so much to Goompy for letting me show off this line. But that's all I have for this video, so leave a comment down below letting me know which one was your favorite, and which one you could see actually making it into Hisui. Also, make sure to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell if you enjoyed the video, and become a member if you want to show some extra support to the channel. And with that, I will see you guys next time.